The Great Pyramid of Giza, built with copper chisels, wooden mallets, and sheer human determination. That's what we're told. But hidden deep inside lies evidence of technology that shouldn't exist. Deep inside the pyramid's entrance, embedded in granite blocks that have been there for millennia, are massive tubular drill holes, perfectly circular, impossibly precise, with deep spiral grooves inside that look exactly like what modern machinery would create. According to mainstream archaeology, the ancient Egyptians had nothing but primitive copper tools. So how did they create drill holes that modern engineers struggle to replicate even today? In 2015, researchers with special permission climbed the pyramid's exterior blocks to reach the original entrance, high above where tourists enter. Only archaeologists with special connections can make this climb. At the entrance, embedded directly into the structure, sits a granite block. And when you look closely, you see three massive tubular drill holes driven deep into one of Earth's hardest stones. When researchers shined their lights into these holes at the right angle, they saw something that made them stop cold. Deep inside are spiral striations, grooves wrapping around the interior surface in a consistent, machine-like pattern. This is the same evidence that Sir Flinders Petrie documented over a century ago with his famous Core No. 7. Petrie was shocked by what he found. The spiral grooves suggested the drill was advancing into granite at one-tenth of an inch per revolution. That's astonishing, even by modern standards. But here's what makes this discovery significant. This isn't an artifact in a museum that skeptics can dismiss. This is physical evidence built directly into the pyramid structure. It's been there since the beginning. The positioning suggests they served a specific purpose, likely part of a door mechanism. Two holes are partially filled with sand and debris, but they're clearly there, drilled with incredible precision into solid granite. These weren't decorative, they were functional. The pyramid builders needed to drill precise, deep holes into granite, and they did it with apparent ease. Follow the descending passage down beneath the pyramid to the subterranean chamber, the lowest accessible point, carved into bedrock. Sitting on the ledge is another massive chunk of granite with multiple tubular drill holes going in different directions. Once again, with the right lighting, you see those telltale spiral marks, the smoking gun proving these weren't hand-carved. These granite blocks were quarried from Aswan, over 500 miles away, transported down the Nile, and dragged to the pyramid site. Each weighs hundreds or thousands of pounds. And once they arrived, the builders drilled precise holes through them. Now let's go to the heart of the pyramid, the King's Chamber. This room is constructed entirely from massive blocks of red granite. At the center sits the famous granite box, carved from a single block of solid granite with a hollow interior of incredible precision. But here's what most visitors never learn. Get down on the floor, shine a light under the edge, and you'll see tubular drill marks on the interior walls. The builders didn't carve this hollow by hand. They used tube drills to make plunge cuts, multiple overlapping circular holes that allowed them to remove material quickly and efficiently. Then they finished the surfaces. This is exactly how modern manufacturers would approach the same task. But according to mainstream Egyptology, ancient Egyptians didn't have this technology. Yet the physical evidence tells a completely different story. The drill marks are right there. You can photograph them. You can measure them. Engineer Christopher Dunn studied these marks extensively. His analysis concluded the precision and characteristics are consistent with advanced rotary drilling technology. If you think those examples are impressive, consider what researchers have found at other sites. At various Old Kingdom locations, particularly in granite work, 
they've documented tubular drill holes 20 to 24 inches in diameter. At Karnak Temple, high up on one of the massive granite gates, easily 30 to 40 feet above ground, there's a gigantic circular hole drilled clean through solid granite. This hole is about two feet in diameter. Even today, drilling a perfectly circular hole two feet in diameter through solid granite, 40 feet in the air, would require specialized equipment. The same pattern appears throughout Egypt. Wherever you find precision granite work, you find evidence of tubular drilling, all showing the same characteristics, perfectly circular, clean cuts, often with visible spiral marks. There are even examples of overlapping tube drills, multiple drills right next to each other, used for material removal exactly the way modern manufacturers would use them. If this evidence is so clear and widespread, why isn't it part of the standard narrative? Mainstream Egyptology has built its entire framework on the assumption that ancient Egyptians worked with primitive tools. Any precision work was achieved through patience, skill, and massive manual labor. But modern researchers have tried to replicate these drilling techniques using the tools ancient Egyptians supposedly had, and they failed. In one experiment, researchers attempted to drill granite using copper tubes and abrasive sand, the method Egyptologists claim was used. After hours of continuous work, they'd barely made a scratch. The copper wore away almost immediately. Another team tried cutting granite using copper saws and sand. After days of effort, they'd made only superficial cuts. The tools dulled rapidly. The precision we see in ancient work remained completely out of reach. Multiple research teams have been unable to replicate what we see in the archaeological record. Yet mainstream archaeology continues to insist these primitive methods are the answer. Part of it is institutional inertia. Changing the narrative would mean admitting that generations of scholars got it wrong. But if we accept that ancient Egyptians had advanced drilling technology, we have to ask uncomfortable questions. Where did they get it? How did they develop it? And what other technologies might they have possessed? The tubular drill holes aren't just about drilling. They're evidence that challenges our entire understanding of ancient history. Engineering knowledge that supposedly didn't exist. And they're not rare. They're everywhere. In the pyramid. In the subterranean chamber. In granite boxes across Egypt. In megalithic temples. In quarries. This widespread evidence suggests we're not looking at experimental technology. We're looking at an established industrial capability. Some researchers, like Christopher Dunn, have proposed that ancient Egypt inherited advanced technology from an earlier civilization. Others suggest ancient Egyptians developed this technology themselves, but the tools and methods were closely guarded secrets. When these guilds disappeared, the technology was lost. Whatever the explanation, one thing is clear. The physical evidence doesn't match the story we've been told. Yet despite all this evidence, requests to conduct detailed studies, to create latex molds that would preserve exact measurements, to perform materials analysis, these requests are consistently denied by Egyptian authorities. If there's truly nothing unusual about these drill holes, why not allow independent researchers to study them thoroughly? The mysterious tube drills inside the Great Pyramid represent one of archaeology's most tangible, most undeniable mysteries. They're not theoretical. They're physical objects you can touch, photograph, and measure. At the pyramid's entrance, Three massive drill holes show spiral marks consistent with advanced rotary drilling. In the subterranean chamber, more granite blocks show the same precise cuts. In the king's chamber, the granite box displays interior drill marks from its manufacturing. And throughout Egypt, 
tubular drill evidence appears wherever precision granite work exists. Modern attempts to replicate these holes using primitive tools have failed completely. Yet the establishment continues to resist alternative explanations. If ancient Egyptians didn't create these precision drill holes with copper chisels and sand, how did they do it? What technology did they possess? And what else about ancient Egypt have we misunderstood? The answers are literally carved into the stones of the Great Pyramid, waiting for researchers brave enough to look closely and honest enough to admit when the evidence doesn't match the story.